delicious. I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. It's a late February morning and we're here at Zager Genetics in Modesto, California. We're going to talk to some of the folks here about how they hand pollinate and create hybrids of, of new fruit tree varieties. So I'm really excited to be here. I think it's going to be a, a, a great video and very informative. So let's, uh, let's go inside and take a look. I'm here with uh, Gary Zager, uh, Floyd Zager's son, and Gary is doing some chill calculations today and looking at what he calls an indicator tree. And this is a variety of peach called Desert Gold. So Gary, tell me what you're looking for a, a, as an indicator tree. Uh, we're looking at the stage of bloom at, um, at the time of year. So what, so what do you estimate? I know this is going to be a horrible year for accumulation of chill throughout California, southern and northern. What, what do you estimate your chill here is in Modesto this year? Uh, uh, we're estimating about 300 hours this year. Which is probably less than half of what you would normally yeah. get. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're probably, what, average six, seven hundred hours? Mm, years ago, before uh, climate change, this was a 1,200-hour... Yeah. So we've really steadily gone downhill in the last 25, 30 years. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the fruit set is reflected this year. And, um, you know, thanks for giving me a minute of your time. Well, Always a pleasure. pleasure. My pleasure. I'm out here in the field at Zager's this morning with Juana and Elena. And what they're doing is a pollinization project. So they have four different types of pollen that they're hand pollinating this plum variety with to determine what is the best pollinator to be used for commercial production or for, for backyard growing of this variety. So this, this will allow them to determine which variety works best. So the one that sets the most fruit from the hand pollinization project will become the recommended pollinator for this variety in the future. This, uh, this process is done in isolation in this um, tent structure so that no other uh, bee activity would contribute pollen that could uh, change the percentage that they would see on any one of these varieties. So we want to make sure that this is done in isolation so nothing else contributes uh, pollen to the, to the maternal tree. I'm here this morning with Tracy Betancourt. She is Floyd Zager's granddaughter, and Tracy is picking flowers to be used for the male pollen that they're gonna use to cross-pollinate maternal trees in the greenhouse today. So Tracy, at what, at what stage you're looking for this, what we call popcorn stage, where the blooms are just starting to show some color, but they're not really open yet. Correct. And that reason is because you hope that the, um, the anther is mature enough. Because if you get it too early, like this, for example, with hardly any pink, the anther is probably not mature enough, so it's, it won't be any good. And when they're completely open, it's already... It's already spent. Yes. Yeah. So this is something that you really have to do every day that you're that you're hand pollinating. You have to collect fresh pollen every morning yes, in order to do that. Yes, it's a very short window. You know, fruit, you can, you know, let slide a little bit and you can kind of guess, but flowers, they're either there or they're not. Absolutely. Know, all or nothing process. Well, it's just amazing to think that you have to come out here every single day and just hand pick flowers in order to, in order to do this. It's such a long, lengthy process that you have to go through to create these hybrids. Yes. But when we start tasting fruit in the summer, we figure out it's, it's really worth it. Yeah. You're collecting the pollen from the popcorn stage flowers, and this will be used as the, as the, the, the male pollinating parent. For the, for the crosses. So this is a variety that we were just out in the orchard and collected with uh, Tracy. So uh, show me how you, uh, how you do that, Floyd. Show me how you separate that. This is determined it would be used when it was fruited. So, th so this this uh, this perennial variety was determined last uh, summer when you had the fruit on the on the trees in the orchard. Yeah. 
So notes were taken at that time where this particular number is going to be used as a as a uh, what paternal. What characteristic it has as far as size or color or ripening season or, ripening or whatever season. character you're looking to to breed into the new uh, hybrid. Well, there's nothing to it. So you basically just snip that flower bud in half and uh, and collect the the section that holds the pollen. And I may do a fifty or a hundred of these every day of different ones. Mm -hmm. So then, once you've collected this pollen. It's, it's only viable for a short period of time, so it has to be used basically the same day. It to be used tomorrow. Today or tomorrow. Yeah, today it'll have to be dry tonight under the lights. Oh, okay, I see. So it's actually, you're collecting this morning for use tom tomorrow. in, in tomorrow's project. Right. And I don't know what we're collecting, but I ever, every day I collect probably a hundred or two. 150 So that's it. That's where the magic begins. Yeah, and they take this, put it under the lights to dry it mm -hmm. tonight, and then it goes out in the morning for them to use the next day. That's all there's to it. It's a lot of labor. Just a lot of labor, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I mean, the, the whole process is, is just labor related, you know, from, from the collection yeah, to the separation. Right. This is what we like to call the, um, the old fashioned Luther Burbank type mm -hmm. of hybridization. You know, this is not a genetic modification. This is, this is a, an old fashioned, hand pollinated hybrid the way the way that it would actually happen in in nature had those two trees had the opportunity to overlap well the Luther Bank Burbank had one guy that did most of it by the name of Anderson mm -hmm. and I work for Anderson I, I understand that yeah so yeah, your yeah. you know direct connection between you and Anderson and Anderson and Luther Burbank so you're you know you you learn from the masters all, all of us wasn't smart enough to go on to do something that you retire about 60. Why would you want to retire? You have such a wonderful business that you're involved in and you, you know, you get your rewards all the time. I mean, every time I'm out in the orchard and eat a piece of your fruit, I mean, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. I, I, um, I work at it because I'm sit around home like it's it, not, not my piece of home. Well, I, I, I understand it's a it's a labor of love for you. You know, you've been doing this for many years and and it's just uh, mm -hmm. brings a smile to my face to see you still doing this, Floyd. Well I won't be ninety one till another month. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. So I'm here this morning uh, uh, in one of the Zager greenhouses with Leith Gardner. Leith is uh, Floyd's daughter. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been involved in the business, Leith? Well, as soon as I was born. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You, probably when you, when you were writing a... nurseries, we had uh, containers. And as soon as we were able to help out in the field, we did whatever was necessary. So, so we were physically capable of doing. This is a, a lifetime venture for you. Yes. You've been doing yes. it all your life, which a lot of us in the nursery business mm -hmm. have been doing similar. But, you know, we're, we're looking at hybridization this morning. We're looking at uh, how the varieties are hand pollinated using the pollen we harvested earlier today and pollinating these, these trees in an isolated condition. This is a really nice example of a genetic dwarf it's either a peach or a nectarine or a hybrid of the two. 
peach. So uh, they've done a lot of work for the home garden market over the last few years with hybridizing some wonderful new genetic dwarf varieties. And, and when I say genetic, I really mean hybrid. These are not genetically modified. They're just hybrids of, of peach and nectarine. And this is a variety that will grow on its own and attain no more than a height of about six feet maximum over a 15 or 20 or even 30 year period of time. So these are strictly being hybridized for the home garden market and not as Correct. a commercial product. So well, eventually the, a lot of the commercial growers would like to get the size of the tree down, but I don't think the genetic dwarfs are going to do it because there's too much leaf coverage. Yeah. You don't get the color that is necessary for a commercial product, but we are looking for definitely smaller genetic dwarfs for the home garden with better flavor and something that's a little more unique than the old ones that are out there now. Right, right. And, and you know, there have been varieties around for many, many years and most of them of marginal fruit quality. So Correct. it's really nice to see that you're able to improve some of the fruit qualities on these. We have, we have four varieties now um, in an evaluation program. In fact, one of them we released this year, which was the new um, uh, Nectacot. Mm -hmm. It was a white fleshed uh, nectarine that actually has some apricot parentage. And Correct. That seems to be a great variety and, and we have three others that uh, we'll be trialing in, in several different locations this mm -hmm. year. So uh, I'm really excited about all the new you know, genetic dwarf combinations that you're working with. And would, would you say that this is something that maybe you'll, you'll come up with uh, uh, a strain that may be um, a little wider headed or a little more open centered that may actually you know w eventually work into commercial well we are uh, definitely adaptation looking for something like that um, whether this specific wine would do it I don't think so because all the branches are going straight up the middle but uh, right we are looking for those that have lost some of that vertical growth habit yeah and um, has a little bit more so it will branch out sideways without a lot of pruning right so a little more wide-headed you know you're actually kind of breeding a little bit of the of the dwarf character back out of them you correct. know so that you can get a little bit more size and correct and with the fruit being so close together on these it definitely takes a lot of thinning to get a good piece of quality piece of fruit right they produce in clusters sometimes correct. four five six in a cluster and correct. you want to thin all those clusters down to one i mean look at the each one of these branches is just well, it's just every, every, every flower buds all the way up the branch at every, at every bud, node more, yes yeah it usually produces also flower buds so when you have the brachitic dwarfs or this type of thing you just get Fruit, masses of fruit on exactly it. so I mean in this this branch right here 18 inch long branch probably has 40 flowers on it if, I mean if half of those actually set a fruit you could have 20 fruit on that one little branch and correct and they will be all little if you want fruit size you, you would want two fruit on that branch so, maybe yes. yeah yeah or maybe one yeah so you know thinning With the size and the quality and the flavor it um, you need to definitely reduce the competition from the other fruit and let them grow. Absolutely. You know, and thinning is something we always emphasize and, and you know, this is a great example to show how important that would be. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 let's look at hybridization. So, Tracy, we've been, yes. uh, we've been out in the orchard. We were collecting pollen. We um, uh, worked, worked with your grandfather to separate the pollen from the flowers. So, kind of explain to us what's, uh, what's going on here at this point. These are our, the barrels. These are what we call our mother stock. And what she's doing right now, she's emasculating. So she's taking everything off except for the pistol. So she's ripping off the petals and everything. But as you can see, the little pistols everywhere is what she's leaving because that's what will then hand pollinate. So you're just, just leaving the exposed pistol yes, and that's just it. Just leaving the exposed pistol. And then, so this one you can see has been pollinated from the 16th to the 22nd. So this, this tree's already been worked yes. five times. Yes. And we're doing it doing it here again now. Yeah. And so what's in the barrel is this number and it's a peach and it was crossed with this. So then then taken you can see in here is a smashed pollen. Mm hmm And they have the little brush and then they go through and they hand. So pollen. just like a little almost like a little makeup yep. brush. The yeah. Eyeshadow brush. Right. So this this is your this is your maternal parent. Yes. And then this is this is the, the, the male pollen that's, that's yes. being so that's the male in. pollen that's putting onto the female. And and you've you know you've calculated 
strategically what these two varieties are yes. and you're you're doing these crosses for a specific reason so you're looking for an end result yes, you're looking for, for an or, early bloom yes. or a large size fruit or flavor. A, a flavor or a color character yes. so all of these crosses are are calculated and and then they're covered up with a with a tyvek or a no a, just the plums are covered up oh so every tree is not covered the self sterile no, the every self, tree is just not self sterile. Okay, just self -sterile. okay. But at, at this point, once the pollen is added to these varieties, there's no chance that they're going to pollinate with anything else. Flower's basically gone. And, you know, you're, you've calculated yeah, exactly what goes into the crop. Yes, yes, it's a very controlled environment. A lot of times when you've already emasculated and you do get bees coming in and insects, all they're doing is crawling up into the calyx cup because that's where they, the nectar is they're looking for. Okay. So they never bring any pollen. They, nev they the never top. contribute. No, not ve not never. Very seldom. Very <laughs> seldom do they contribute. But, um, I mean, because you always do get outcrosses, even if we accidentally miss picking the open flowers off when we're finished. Because you're always going to have flowers come out after you're fin which you, when you think you're finished, you've got, thought you've got 100% of them, and then you come back a week later and there's probably 15 flowers decided to bloom. Right, right. So we go through those and always pick them off. And even in, in a year like this, when, when the chill hours have been so erratic, you're probably going to get more of an uh, erratic bloom character. Yes, so do. instead of having a really wonderful uh, flower development and opening all at one time, you're going to get that gradually over a two or three or four week period. Which is why some of these are being done five, six, and seven Exactly, hours. exactly. Because you can only do the flowers when they reach a certain stage. Anything that's a small pea stage like this, the pistils aren't developed yet. Okay. Then they're not receptive for the pollen tube to grow down the style. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things you're waiting for. And that's why we have them in the greenhouse to control the humidity and the temperature. So the pollen tube growth is that much better, which improves our take on our hand pollination crosses. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I absolutely love this old fashioned philosophy on hybridization. It's just, uh, you know, a wonderful way to create some fantastic new varieties. And you guys, your dad started this, was it 60 years ago? About 60 years ago, yeah. So, you know, you have 60 years worth of, of germplasm that you're working with. And, you know, it just seems to me, I, I've, been, I've been coming to Zager walkthroughs on and off for over 20 years now, and it just seems to me that every year things get a little better and a little better and there's just well, that's always new and yeah. improved varieties. Yeah. That's what we're striving for on, on a lot of these varieties. As you say, we've evaluated them. We look for varieties that say have everything, every good quality you can think of, but maybe not enough color or not enough bricks. So then we go through on the varieties we've been evaluating and look for those that, depending on the maturity time we want to try and reach, um, pick those that have better color or better sugar and combine the two together. So Absolutely. Doing the better size with the better color. So the end result of, of what we're doing here today is going to be what you would call an F1 hybrid. Yes. It's a simple, you know, male pollen mm -hmm. to a female flower. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're going to grow on that, that fruit and evaluate that fruit for its character. So. Well, the what? only thing that's going to change is the embryo. Right. The fruit on this tree is no, exactly. the same as the mother. Exactly. Parent. You're, you're, yeah. you're going to get a change in, in the seedling that comes Correct. from that fruit. Yes. So how many um, stages of hybridization have some of these varieties gone through over the years? Are you at F6, F8, F10s? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know some, some of, of these things have been evaluated a dozen different times and you're going, yeah, that's almost what we want, but we don't really have quite the color that we want. We don't really have quite the size that we want. We'd rather have this a, a free stone instead of a cling stone or, or whatever. So you go back in and you hybridize again. Or you hybridize one of the seedlings from that mother. Right, right. Just to try and change that, that characteristic you, when again. you look at the pedigrees when we're going through, sometimes you'll see that... Um, you've been selecting open pollinated seedlings maybe six times from the one cross we're making here. Right. Because every year the seedling is improved and so you make it a selection and then you turn around and you pre-cross that with what the new trends are, or the new chilling requirements are or things like that that need to be improved upon because with all the climate changing and everything that it's necessary to find varieties that are very adaptable. Sure, sure. So you're looking for 
early bloomers for low chill, late mm -hmm. bloomers for high Correct. chill, late season fruit varieties trying to extend out the cherry Correct. season or the plum season. So the genetic greens, everything. Absolutely, absolutely. So we try to... Uh, well, I, I, I have to tell you, you know, I, I mean, I just, I, every time I make a trip and come and visit Zagers, whether it's a fruit walkthrough or for something like this, I mean, as a somebody that's been in the horticultural industry for 40 years this is this to me is like a trip to disneyland <laughs> it's it's a lot of painstaking hand labor but um some of the results have been very good very good for the industry very good for the consumer absolutely um, your your results speak for themselves so you know those are the things we're trying to do we're looking to improve a little in everywhere not just one specific thing we take what we always call the shotgun approach to uh, improve it worldwide. Well, that, you know, 60 years worth of, uh, of calculated hybrids is uh, an effort that probably could never be replicated. This depends on if you have another job to support your hobby. <laughs> <laughs> the tree she's pollinating here may never produce anything worth running with. No, but if, if you don't try, then you don't really know that. That's it. So, so what do you estimate this year? How many, how many um, uh, seedlings do you think you'll end up with out of this program this year for evaluation? Well, we usually average about 50,000 seedlings a year. We try to get in something like this, it's best to get approximately 100 fruit because that mm -hmm. gives you a pretty good distribution of what your um, characteristics you're going to be looking for because most all of ours come from the phenotypic characteristics or the looks and the taste and the, um, those characteristics versus what it's genetically made of. Right. We do have the pedigrees for all of these that we're, we're hand crossing and we can tell you where we started from, but that's not necessarily everything we look at. We wanna see the physical characteristics to make sure it, it's improved over what's in the industry at this time. Absolutely. So if, if you were to if you were to harvest a hundred seed from this tree and plant out a hundred seedlings, you know, you you're you're not necessarily going to get the same characteristic out of mm -hmm. each one of those seedlings. No, they'll all be like sisters. Right. So you you have to, then you have to reevaluate the the seedlings that go through that next phase program and decide, you know, well this one has pretty much the characteristic that we're looking for. So mm -hmm. this is the one that will bud out into a mature tree block and, mm -hmm. and grow that on for the secondary evaluation Correct. stage. A lot of time, a lot of effort. A lot of time, a lot of effort. You know, we evaluate probably of the seedlings between the, the primary planted on their own root and the budded ones we have. Um, it's probably about 175,000 seedlings every year. And um, we might get 700 that we think have potential and of those by the time you reevaluate them a second time and realize that the characteristics are not going to hold and be what you want you end up maybe in 12 15 years one percent of them made it yeah well that's uh that's it's a numbers game it you know is, it's, it's a numbers game and, and if you were if you were planting a thousand seedlings a year and instead of the number that you're planning, you know, your chances are going to be that much less that you're going to find anything right. valuable. So right. I think, you know, you guys have you guys have mastered that numbers game now to a point where after so many years of, of hybridization, you know, now you really have some great germplasm to work with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the results, like I said, speak for themselves. Yep, it's more fun every year. <laughs> Thank you, Leith. <laughs> Thank you. So Tracy, what do we have here? So in all of these bottles are the crosses for these barrels. So these would be the male, the male pollen. And this is what we use for all of the barrels inside of here. So when we were out collecting the pollen off the tree out in the field, and then we watched my grandpa cut it into the bowl, mm -hmm. and then from there it goes into these bottles. So how, how long is the viability of, of the pollen in these vials? Um, we keep them in here all year, and then the ones that we want to maybe continue to use next year, we can put in the freezer, and we usually leave them in the freezer for up to a year. And you're, you're um, working this pollinization process for six, seven, eight weeks out uh, of the year? Yeah, it all depends on the weather, but this year I think we started the end of January, 
and we'll run January 16th and then we'll run probably until the middle of March this year. Yeah, so about two months. Yeah. 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 So that's a lot of uh, numbers to keep track of. Uh, I know you guys have a system in place for that, but it just seems almost intimidating to, you know, to look at all this <laughs> yeah. in front of you here. But that's, that's what makes a hybrid, you know, yeah. you have to have the right pollen varieties, you have to have the right uh, maternal parent and uh, just evaluate the, the progeny that comes off of those. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, thank you. So we what? hopefully keep them in numerical order. Yeah, so every morning. <laughs> so that was really a great visit that we had with Zager Genetics. Every time I go over there, I learn something new and I'm just fascinated with the amount of effort that they put into hybridizing new varieties. And we've at Dave Wilson Nursery have been working with Zagers for almost the entire run of the nursery for at least 50 years. Zagers has come up with some wonderful varieties over the years. The one uh, that I'm standing next to right here is one of their first interspecific introductions. It's Dapple Dandy Pluot. It was the first one on the market. It's the one that they called Dinosaur Egg early on and it's still one of my favorite pieces of fruit to eat in midsummer. So they've been hybridizing and rehybridizing and rehybridizing again for decades now and they've just come up with some fantastic fruit and nut varieties over the years. So I really feel honored to be able to work with them and honored to know the family in, in, in the way that I do. So I, I hope you all enjoy this video and I hope it sheds a little bit of light on the amount of effort that it takes to, to produce some of these interspecific varieties. It's not just throw a seed in the ground and, and sell a tree. It's, it's all about time. It takes literally 15 years to put a variety from the, the pollinization process into its final evaluation stages and actually get it on the market. So a lot of effort, a lot of people rely on what happens at, at Zagers to make their living. So um, again, I'd, I'd just like to throw in that I'd, I'd love for you guys all to respect those patents. You know, they're, they're varieties that have literally hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars into the development stages of, of, of some of these things over the years. And uh, they're just so incredible. The fruit is so wonderful. And, and I just feel like Floyd Zager is, is a genius. Floyd, what Floyd Zager has been able to do over the years and now with his family carrying on behind him, we need, we need to respect that. And we need to just be thankful for what he's produced and what he is allowing us all to enjoy. So the next time you eat a pluot or an aprium or a nectaplum or a, a pluary, a cherry plum hybrid, just think of Floyd and think of all the effort that's gone into producing these hybrids over the years. Enjoy your fruit trees, enjoy your fresh fruit. We'll see you soon.